guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we have an update on the trailer lawsuit against H3 Productions. And the main hot topic of today's video is going to be James Charles addressing the fact that he's being sued by one of his ex-employees. And he also talked about his old Twitter account, which we're gonna cover as well. But before we get into the tea, make sure to subscribe, turn your post notifications on, give this video a big old thumbs up. All right, buckle up and let's get into the tea. So let's start with the update and then move on to the main T. In my last video where we talked about H3 getting sued by Triller for copyright issues related to Jake Paul's fight, you can check it out by the way, it's linked down below. Um, a lot of you guys mentioned that I've missed the update where the lawsuit was dropped by the court. Emily D. Baker, a lawyer who also makes YouTube videos mainly on legal tea, had a live stream where she went through the lawsuit documents and she read the court's response. All of the defendants mentioned in the trailer case have been dropped besides one. So yeah, H3 was dropped from the lawsuit. Here's a clip. Is because the proposed second amended complaint does not cure the misjoinder identified by the court, the court denies plaintiff's request for leave to file the second amended complaint with, without prejudice to any efforts to seek amendment in a manner consistent with federal rule of civil procedure 15A. Pursuant to FRCP 21, misjoinder of parties is not grounds for dismissing an action. Instead, on motion or its own, the court may at any time on just terms add or drop a party. Where there is misjoinder, the court can generally dismiss all but the first named defendants without prejudice to the institution of new separate lawsuits against the dropped defendants. Accordingly, the court thus drops all defendants except FilmDaily.com. This order does not limit plaintiff's ability to refile its claims against the remaining defendants in separate actions. It is so ordered. Therein, H3H3 is not being sued because the court has dropped them as a defendant. So at this moment, the only defendant in this lawsuit is Film Daily. However, it was announced today that Triller is pursuing a separate lawsuit against H3. Def Noodles tweeted, breaking news that will most definitely change your life. Triller refiles a lawsuit against H3 podcast for alleged copyright infringement of the Jake Paul fight. This after a judge threw out the first lawsuit Triller tried to file against H3. All in all, the update is H3 got dropped from the lawsuit and now there's a new one. Who knows if it will actually stick this time. Either way, we know that Ethan and Ela have experience in this already. Moving on, James Charles. We gotta talk about James Charles and more legal drama. No, there aren't any underage boys involved in this one. Now, let me preface this by saying that some of the tea we haven't covered because, well, if you've been watching my videos lately, we've been on a Gabby Hanna streak lately. The last two weeks, there have been other topics that we haven't talked about, but once again, the main focus was Gabby. A lot of other channels have made in-depth videos on James and him being sued, so you can check those out. But to give you guys a quick recap on everything that's been going on, an ex-employee is suing James. The employee was initially hired as a video editor. She's worked with other influences before, including Erica Costell, and apparently she sued Erica before and won that lawsuit. And so this is her second lawsuit against an employer. It's because James has allegedly mistreated her by underpaying her for overworking and firing her after a serious injury. The employee's name is Kelly Rocklin, I think. After a while, she was promoted by James to a video producer, but allegedly he didn't hire a new video editor, so Kelly was now working both as an editor and a producer, overworking 12 hours per day, seven days a week. On top of that, she was underpaid for putting in that much work and she was mistreated after she had a serious injury that required her to take time off of work. But James allegedly was asking her why she's not working, why she's not doing her job and taking her responsibilities more seriously while she was recovering. And now James put a video on Twitter addressing that plus a recent scandal involving an old Twitter account. Let's firstly look into the lawsuit part and then we're gonna go through the Twitter scandal. He started off with, this is not my return on social media, but I have to make another statement. He said that he does not want to even bother with notes, app, apology, or a response. So he's just gonna hit record and talk about it. Don't worry, this is not my return to social media. But unfortunately I am logging in today because I feel as though I am being cornered and have to make yet another public statement. 
I know people are sick of these. I don't blame you. I'm not even gonna bother writing out like a whole notes out thing today. I'm just gonna hit record and start talking to you guys one-on-one -on -one because there's a lot that I wanna talk about and hopefully whoever wants to listen can just listen. Can you imagine the audacity? James, most of your notes apologies haven't been good. Most of the time people wanted you to sit in front of a camera and address the things you're involved in. He's acting like the social media break is not just for people to sort of forget what's been happening with him in the past months. But unfortunately for him, his scandals this year are basically by sister 2.0. But this time, he's doing it all by himself. No need for Tati to do it. Anyway, he went on to say that he feels like the situation with the lawsuit and his ex-employee is basically blackmailing him. Apparently, it's been going on for two entire years now, but in James's words, only now went to the public because it's perfect timing. The situation that I was in is being taken advantage of, and I feel as though I'm being blackmailed, which is why I wanted to film this video today. Um, for those who are not aware, for the last two years now, I've been dealing with an ongoing lawsuit from one of my previous employees. This is something that I have never spoken about, I've never mentioned, because I wanted to keep it private out of respect for her, uh, and the fact that it's literally an ongoing litigation. Uh, but she's now speaking about it, which is just perfect time considering everything else that's going on. He talked about that Kelly was a video editor, then promoted to a producer. Like we already mentioned, James said that it was a $72,000 salary a year, but she worked for about six months. I hired an editor. This person worked for me and then was later promoted to my producer, which means she was no longer editing. She was helping me film videos and was like my right-hand person for a salary of $72,000 a year. She only worked for me for about six months and then was let go, and now I am being sued. He said that her claims in the lawsuits were untrue, being underpaid, mistreated, and overworked, etc. James went on to say that his team is very small, most of the people are like family to him, and they've worked together for a long time. He mentioned that he cares about his employees, and he makes sure that they are very well taken care of. Basically alleges that she was wrongfully terminated, overworked, and underpaid, all of which are untrue. I have a very, very small team. I've always had a small team. There are not many ex-employees because most of my team members have been with me for a really long time now. My team is like family to me. I love them all so much. You guys know a lot of them from being in the background of my YouTube videos, and I stand behind the fact that they are very, very well taken care of. After that, James talks about how in the entertainment industry, there are a lot of cases like this one that don't even go to court because one, they are very, very expensive to pursue, and two, they are quite long. Usually the defendant, in this case him, settles to pay a certain amount of money to drop the case just because people don't want to go to the full length of taking someone to court. James said it's been two years since the case was filed, but they are nowhere near getting a date for court. He said it would be the smarter option to settle and just move on. However, he just learned that there is an article coming out soon on him and allegedly Kelly has talked to reporters about what it's like working for James. Uh, but settling is no longer an option that's on the table, and I'm going to tell you why. This past week, I was reached out to for comment about a news article that is coming soon, uh, and I learned that she is talking to the press about this lawsuit and what it was like to work for me as an employee. However, she's adding a ton of absolutely ridiculous, absurd, untrue, defamatory, just the, the craziest claims you could ever imagine. Uh, and in my opinion, it's an attempt to pressure me into making a much, much higher settlement offer. Once again, I'm talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. He pretty much described all of her claims as ridiculous, defamatory, and untrue. And in his opinion, and it is to get his attention to make a higher price for the settlement, speaking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that is a lot of money. He kept on explaining some of the ridiculous claims, one of which was that James has repeatedly said the N-word in front of her and this is just in time, perfectly timed. Things much more serious and disgusting, such as that I used to say the N-word around her all the time. This is just perfect, convenient timing as well, considering this past weekend, my old Twitter account, which I have not accessed since 2016 and only has one tweet, I guess was hacked last year and the hacker publicly tweeted somebody the N-word and people actually thought that it was me because of his twitter scandal that's been going on around these past few days if you don't know an old twitter account that was for james has been exposed for tweeting the n-word at jeffree star a few months ago at first this whole thing with this account was kind of sus but people found out it was linked to older videos of james people were questioning if it was hacked maybe james gave it to a fan since the last tweet from the n-word was from 2016 some are wondering if perhaps this was his burner account or maybe this was done for attention at the time. Maybe he brought it up now to make people talk about him, but 
not about the other stuff that he's been in hot water for, like, I don't know, talking to underage boys. After everyone started looking into it, the 2020 tweet was deleted from the account and then the whole account was suspended. And James actually confirmed that the account was his real account at some point. He did use it. However, he said that someone must have hacked the account last year and he said that people actually think it was me, but I haven't used the account since 2016. James also added that on top of all this, people are thinking this Twitter situation was made up by him to be talked about and whatnot, he was very blunt on the fact that he's never and he will never pay someone to talk or not talk about him. Therefore, he stated that he will be pursuing this case because he knows what the public thinks of him at this point and he doesn't want lies to be spread about him from that article. He said, I know that the article will come out and he knows it's gonna look bad. All in all, James said that he hopes justice will be served, people can see the situation for what it is, and that he can't do much or say a lot on what's happening, but he wants to address this to his followers. The problem though, and why I'm making this video today, is because until that happens one day, we are dealing with the court of public opinion, which is a very, very different situation. And it's a court that is not on my side right now, which is just frustrating because like I mentioned earlier, I feel as though this is all just to pressure me. There has been two years of time and opportunity to speak about any of this stuff, but, but now it's happening and now we're going to the press and now we're doing this back and forth. It, it just, fe it feels so wrong to me. Um the article in question is coming out from the insider. Definitely said, it appears Insider is responsible for the article James Charles referenced in his Twitter video. Insider journalist Kat Tenbarge responded to James's video in a now deleted thread saying, blackmail is a criminal allegation and a really crazy and stupid one to make. She said, literally cannot believe this. Okay, well, yeah, you paid your creative director $72,000 after a raise. We'll start there. Since you're the one putting it out, more soon. A few other YouTubers came for James, including Ethan Klein from H3, T Spill, and others. Ethan Klein tweeted, wow, that's so crazy, man. Imagine if she accused you of s***ing minors. T-Spill tweeted, James Charles on the lawsuit he's in with an ex-employee. An article that's about to come out. Thoughts? One person responded saying, I ain't reading all of that. I'm happy for you, though. Or sorry, that happened. Oh, and while we are on the topic of James, his collaborations with Morphe have finally been discounted, meaning you can get the James Charles palette previously from $39 to now $35. What a steal, you guys. And the mini is now on sale from $26 to $24. Here's what people think about that. And that's all on James Charles for now. Hope you guys liked this little summary of it all. Let me know what your thoughts are on this one. Do you think James is telling the truth about the Twitter account? What do you think about his response to the lawsuit? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. I post new videos every single week. All right, bye.